along with former U.S. international Ali Wagner. I'm J.P. Della Camera. Six lineup changes tonight. Ali, what does that mean for your expectations for this game? You know, I think I don't expect the level. Reality is players can either play themselves onto the Olympic roster tonight or play themselves off. And that's what's intriguing about this matchup. Jamaica will have some changes as well. Both teams actually have changed goalkeepers. So Sydney Schneider gets the call for Jamaica. She plays for the Washington Spirit and Adriana France, Portland Thorns number one goalkeeper, gets the start today. Carly Lloyd wearing the captain's armband. Becky Sauer when available, but on the subs bench tonight. Lloyd, one of the six lineup changes, scored a goal the other night. But it was called off as she was offside. If she scores a goal tonight, she'll become the oldest player for the U.S. women's national team to ever score a goal. And it would be a record also on the men's side. There's a player we'll be looking at, too. Macario, number 11, as France goes back to goal. And we get set for action. U.S. narrowly winning the other night. one to nothing over Portugal. Jamaica with a one nothing win over Nigeria. And match referee is Karen Apt. We await her whistle. Underway from Houston. USA in blue. Jamaica in the yellow and green. And on this right side, Emily Sonnet, one of those lineup changes. The versatile right back will push it back. Cut inside by the Lavelle pass, Horan. Playing for the injured Julie Ertz in that spot. Played into the box, early chance line, she's got it! one nothing USA, the oldest player to ever score for the U.S. national team. Busby, the Jamaican manager, told us yesterday we need to keep things tight for the first 10 or 15 minutes and not let the U.S. get out on the front foot. And they do exactly that. And they did what Vlad Anonofsky wanted to see out of them tonight, and that is get in closer to the 18 before they serve that cross. They got into the half speed. Emily Sonnet drives towards the end line. You get a little rotation with Rose Lavelle coming underneath, and then she dances on it. And then Lindsay Horan getting more touches than she got in more advanced positions than the other night. And Lavelle sitting in the half space has the freedom and the time to pick her head up and then just drive that one across to two players. One's drawing the Jamaican defender near, and Carly Lloyd is wide open at the back post. Brings this one down, and the rest is history. And it was history, actually. Her 125th international goal for Carly Lloyd. Oldest player to score for the U.S. 38 years, 332 days young. Looking for a second, but not much on that one. I mean, this goal is so good from the United States because it creates that rotation on this near side, and then you get the right chemistry at the back post where Carly Lloyd just pulls herself away, sees that Mitch Purse is going to attract and occupy two defenders, and now she's alone. Chest that down. Easy finish for her. Fourth all-time for the U.S. in goal scored. Scored some big ones throughout her career. Down this left-hand side. Press who normally starts on that right side. One of the three forwards up top from the other night. She's the only one still starting in this one. Gun trying to squeeze it through. That's cut off. And now we'll see what Jamaica does, giving up that early goal. USA lineups at the bottom of your screen with those six changes. On this left side, in towards Lloyd. Header, but Sidney Schneider is there to grab it. Lloyd, the goal, the first minute of play. As the U.S. leads, here's Jamaica's starting 11. They two with changes from the other night. Needed to rest some players. They went 16 months without even training because of COVID. The cut by Lloyd. That one's deflected. Not it down. Jamaica looking just to get some touches here and keep some possession. Matthews trying to get away. Aggressive move there by LaBelle, but 
Matthews breaks away. That pass is blocked. Jamaica will recover. Their coach Hubert Busby told us yesterday he has no illusions that they are going to possess the ball a lot tonight. Uh, and he said, we're also know that we're not going to be able to play on the front foot. But he didn't know they were going to concede in the first minute. Yeah, and that's just something that every team sets out against the United States knows they have to be wary of, is that this U.S. gets off on the front foot time and time again, and it puts you in a difficult position. But I don't think it's going to change what Jamaica wants to get out of this game at all. No, they're looking for the experience, right? Two good opponents, days apart. Their next big thing is World Cup qualifying for Jamaica. They're making the last Women's World Cup. They want to continue. Lindsey Horan did well, we thought, the other night in that role that's tough to fill, the big shoes of Julie Ertz. Yeah, and it was interesting in speaking with Vlaco just about in what aspect she, she was he was positive about her play, and that was on the defensive side of things. She broke things up, but he wanted to see her on the ball more. And, you know, that's one thing they're going to evaluate tonight is what pockets is she popping up into. Bell's popping up in pockets. It's played across. Lloyd again off the crossbar. I think Schneider got a slight touch on it first. Lavelle and Lloyd both very active in the opening five plus minutes. Yeah, laser focus from Lloyd. But it's been a theme already early on, JP, where they're getting these crosses and these services off from. Closer to the 18 and not as wide the way it was the other night. Good ball from Salon. Now the ball played across. No one close enough to goal. And Sonnet tries to clear. First, we'll play it back. Dahl Camper. Davidson. Tina Davidson's first start since the Sweden game in April. Played a full 90 there. Ball played over the top. Could be dangerous. What's the call? Or no call. In the seventh minute. Kristen Press went down in the box. And this is something the U.S. is going to want to take advantage of. Oftentimes, Campbell gets sucked up, and there is going to be that space in behind. And Plummer comes over to cover in behind Campbell, yeah. and then just trips up. That press. is a penalty. It was an awkward point to the spot. But she did call it, and Lindsey Horan will step up in the seventh minute. Looking for a 21st international goal against Sidney Schneider. Moran stepping up and scoring easily. 2 nothing U.S. And you got to credit the United States for creating this one. The recognition that that right back was up and the space was on in behind. Kristen Press reads it with a really good run and then draws the foul from Palmer. And Lindsay Horan steps up and does the rest. Really bright start from the U.S. Considering the other night when it took a while for them to get going with that final, final touch. Different story here. On the front foot, right from the get-go. The game was really seconds old when Carly Lloyd scored on a feed from Rose LaBelle. And then Lindsay Horan with that penalty kick in the seventh minute. A 2-0 U.S. lead. The ball was played back and then lost. Horan will move it left. Overhit it for Dunn. Throw in for Jamaica. Far side of the stadium. Has McCarthy even touched the ball? Hmm. It's off Matthews and out. The USA will have it. Lots to play for. The 18-player roster for the Olympics and four alternates will be named sometime after that last game in Austin on Wednesday. Ball is played in, and on a bounce, Schneider will collect it. 
So anxious moments, Alec, for some players that are technically on the bubble. I like what Danielle was saying and Alexi about, you know, the 18 spots. And, you know, we could all probably do the math and figure out who the four or five are that might be on that bubble. Yeah, and, and the reality is Vlaco has those people penciled in, right? And tonight is going to either affirm what he had planned or it's going to shake up a little bit of his assumptions. Played back by Press. Dal Kemper led the team in minutes played the last couple of seasons, a couple of years, and that was deflected out on the LaBelle pass. Rose is the only player to play in every game since the team resumed playing last November after the COVID break. Horan. No one's really closing on her. Giving her freedom to operate. Press to Horan. A 2-0 U.S. lead in the early stages of this one. Davidson. Sonnet. Cuts there. That's Purse. Lavelle. Del Kemper back for Rose. Off Purse. Lavelle couldn't find it. Purse almost did, but now a break for Jamaica. Jody Brown. Played in the World Cup at 17. Tends Florida State University. Jamaica holding right side. No one really close on that side to support her. They get that deflection out, and we'll have a throw in. Tough to be Crystal Dunn, 1v1 on that side. It certainly is. But Tiffany Cameron has good pace, and look, that's one of the identity pieces that Busby says he wants to evolve with this team. He says, we, we have players that are technical and that want to run, so they want to be more direct. They don't want to necessarily control play. They want to go at players, take them on 1v1, and and really try to play more vertically as opposed to going east and west. So there is Katarina Macario, who we've not seen really since the, the third game of this calendar year. It was a COVID situation in France, and she was not able to come here to the U.S. and join her teammates, so we've not seen her in a long time. With Lyon, she did very well. Six goals in 11 games, and they came really over a five six game stretch towards the end yeah i mean she started to find her feet abroad and that was clear just with the minutes that she was playing but even in the matches that i was able to watch started to settle into that system and, and tonight it's going to be interesting to see how she fits into the u.s it's not easy to break into this u.s team not easy to break into leone either there's a chance but the flag's up tiffany cameron was looking for an opportunity no, it's not. And it was interesting in speaking with Vlaco how she's going to be playing on this left side and surrounded by experience tonight with Press, with Lavelle, with Dunn, players like that, and, and how that can actually lift her game up when against Canada. It was more, it was a less experienced side when she was on the right. You had Mitch Purse playing in that outside back position, Lynn Williams up top. And with Macario's style of play, you're fitting in better in this system or this style or the side, I should say. Ten of her purse, it goes out. This is her seventh cap for Midge Purse, all under Vlatko and Danofsky. It's her third start, but her first start up top, where she does play and has played for various club teams, including her current one, Gotham FC. And another example, right, of Vlatko trying to set up these players for success, knowing these are the last times that they're going to be evaluated before he names his roster. That is Hubert Busby, was an assistant to Hugh Menzies at the 2019 Women's World Cup. And Jamaica became the first Caribbean nation to qualify. Look at that move by Lavelle. Then the right-footed cross. Back post. Back across the mouth of goal and no one there to knock it home. That's off Sonnet. Aggressive play to keep it alive with Lavelle blocked. Rose picks it up. Curling ball in. Press. End line. I thought that ball was out, and that's the call. Should be a goal kick. Lloyd and Haran with the goals tonight. U.S. with the lead. And Rose Lavelle with just a nifty little touch. Drifts on by that fullback. 
ball lofted into the far post. Pressed as well, actually, to keep that in play, but Lavelle couldn't get back in to get on the receiving end of it. Blackwood up the wing. Blackwood scored the only goal for Jamaica in their win over Nigeria. Also missed the penalty kick earlier. Here's Macario. Up the middle. That's blocked. The U.S. fights to win it back. Good effort from Press. Dal Kemper. Horan. That's blocked. Salam. She scored Jamaica's first ever goal at a World Cup back in 2019. And she settles this side down. Utter insertion the other night really helped them. She was one of the players that head coach of the U.S., Blasko Andonofsky, pointed out her skill, her vision, ability to make that killer pass. That one's blocked by Davidson. And the U.S. will settle. Mitch Purse down this right side. Used to play with Portland, also Boston. Davidson from the Chicago Red Stars of the NWSL, another product of Stanford University. Sana, purse. The U.S. with a 2 0 lead over Jamaica. Goals by Carly Lloyd and Lindsey Horan on the penalty kick. Goals were about six minutes apart. Press with a pass that's blocked. The U.S. will get it back easily. Kemper to Sonnet. Purse. Tucking it in for LaBelle. That's going to be cleared to safety. It's a U.S. throw in. And that run's going to be on frequently for the United States. Just that attacking mid is surging forward as they pull the outside back up with the wing play. Go and then Oski talked about more precision. He's gotten that first couple of goals early. The other night, we looked at all the shots, the possession, the corner kicks. So it was disappointing for the U.S. that they were not able to put more on the board. Crystal Dunn upfield. The return pass, though, goes out to Jamaica throw in. Done playing now for Portland after playing for the North Carolina Courage and Washington Spirit in the NWSL. It's a Jamaican throw in on this right side. This Jamaican roster, they have five players here from USA colleges, six from NWSL clubs, and now they have players playing in six different countries. None of them are playing in the Jamaican domestic league. It's a sign that their players are getting better. Ball played up. Here's Jody Brown. There's the shot. But it was blocked. Brown doubled up now. Sonnet Lavelle. Brown draws the contact. The work rate of Lavelle, very impressive in the first 16 plus minutes. Yeah, covering a lot of ground. And look, this is going to be one of the tests for the United States tonight is that Jamaica can get forward and they can get forward quickly. Dahl Kemper does well just to separate the player from the ball, but it lands at the feet of Brown. And Sonic does really well just to block that shot, hold her up, and now wait for a second defender to arrive. Lavelle too eager in that. Free kick for Jamaica. Salon drives it back post. Just missed. Flying through was Chantel Swaby. That was close. That was a good ball. That was one that almost found its way tucked into the back post all by itself. Salon going for the in swing, or you can see the U.S. just zonal on that six yard, six yard box, and then you get the late run coming in wide open if she gets anything on that. Chantel Swaby, one of the Swaby sisters that are both in the starting 11 tonight. Both were at the World Cup in 2019. Done. Lifting it long, left sideline. And that's going to go out of play. Throw in for Sashana Campbell. 
especially in Israel and in Iceland as well. She was a starter the other night, too. Ball was lost in LaBelle, chipping it, may get this on her own. She tried, but it's a goal kick. Rose just back now playing in the NWSL again with O.L. Rain. Ball played back to the feet of Schneider. Calmly passed that one away. Blackwood, that's deflected. Jamaica picks it up, Salon. Good idea. Down the left sideline. Blackwood, tackled away. U.S. doesn't concede the corner, but concede a throw in deep. Allison Swavey sending it right side. That's headed away by Dunn. Macario with it. Brazilian born, became a U.S. citizen earlier this year. Sky is the limit for her. Sonnet on the right. Both Sonnet and Davidson who get the start in the back tonight. Both versatile players could play multiple spots, which could help them both in trying to make the Olympic roster. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some shifts that are planned and letting these players play in alternate positions within this game. Just looking, JP, it looks like that, that right mid, right winger for Jamaica will track the winger for the United States, so they do look like they're in a five-back. It's Cameron who's tracking back on press. And no flexing and Kimmel. out of that. Excuse me. Sonnet. Defended by Brown. Purse. Dahlkemper, Davidson. You can see Jamaica have everybody back. The camel pass intercepted. U.S. turning it right back. Sent in on a bounce. Settled there by Purse. And she's got one. 3 0 U.S. on a mid purse goal. Her second international goal. <laughs> and how good is this ball by Kristen Press? She pulls herself deeper into a pocket of space. Now she can get faced up. Jamaica does not read that there's no pressure on the ball. In particular, Denisha Blackwood does not see it. And Mitch Purse just sneaks in behind in that back post area, brings it down one touch, finishes it with the second. And beat Schneider on that near post to add insult to injury. This is such a good start from the U.S., but there's a lot of space for them to take advantage of right now against Jamaica. And that's got to feel good because she knows that she is on that bubble. USA with a 3-0 lead now. Convincing since the opening whistle. Davidson. For Dunn. Ball switched across. Sana. Even though this game had a later start to it, we are expecting hydration breaks. We had one in each half the other night. Macario. Del Kemper. 23rd minute. U.S. with a 3-0 lead over Jamaica. Purse will push it back. Horan. Davidson. Inching forward. Finding Crystal Dunn. No one is closing. The return for Dunn, though, was picked off. Salon. Got it back for Matthews and then lost it. Lindsay Horan. Up the middle, just missed Rose LaBelle. Blackwood's pass back. Dangerous. Boyd did some good work. So did Purse. 
Mitch Purse angled off there by Blackwood. This is Blackwood Stadium. She plays for the Houston Dash. Good job by Purse. Feeling the confidence for getting that goal. Dal Kemper. We're done. Lofted off the right foot for Lloyd. Schneider came out and grabbed it. Twenty-one-year-old Sidney Schneider, 29th pick in the 2021 draft. Played a couple of games at that last World Cup. The U.S. will get control again. Horan. Davidson. Abby Dahl Kemper. Jamaica again dropping back. Getting numbers back, but the U.S. has been able to find that space tonight. Lavelle. And this, is, and this is a really good look at it. Crystal Dunn is going to be wide open for the most part all game long, and Jamaica has been struggling when to step to her and when to release. Long ball in for Lloyd. She was well covered that time. Because uh, on that far side, JP, they are sagging that player back into a five back, and she's just struggling with when do I step, when do I pressure, and so there's so much space over there in that pocket underneath the back line on the far side. The Davidson header. Dal Kemper sliding it for Lavelle. With that cultured left foot. Ran into trouble there and may have injured herself on that last cut. Play is stopped right now for the LaBelle injury. Could also be a hydration break if the referee decides to make that move here. Which would make sense if it was coming up. We'll make sure before we go. 3-0, the U.S. leads. It is official. It is a hydration break, so we'll go to the studio. Rob Stone. JP, back in 2005, Carly Lloyd began her international career. 17 years later, CL10 still getting it going, and she got it going 24 seconds into this one, Danielle. Well, to me, Carly Lloyd obviously is one of the best of all time. As we take a look here, look at the service in from Rose Lavelle here to the Carly Lloyd at the far post. I mean, she's like Tom Brady. I know, Alexi, you were talking about her being out of the starting 18 for you, but for me, she is in. You do not bet against Carly Lloyd. You do not bet against Tom Brady. You do not bet against LeBron James. She is in for me. Agree, and that you don't bet against her. And if, when you do, it just makes her that much more uh, powerful. I mean, look, they have this game well in hand, okay? If you're, you can be nitpicking about some different things here, but sometimes little things matter, especially if you're vying for one of those places going forward. Uh, Franch coming out, misjudging a cross, saw it uh, with a little reckless and, and needless type of challenge that resulted in that foul that then that cross came in. And then Macario, I, I know she's the future, but I'd, I'd just like to see a little bit more urgency and a little more impact to show me why she is the player of the future. We talked to Vako Andonofsky last night about breaking down these bunker defenses that they seemingly see day in, day out. They know as the number one ranked team in the world, this is what they're going to deal with. The number one thing to break down a bunker, get an early goal. And that's exactly what they did. The other thing, the, the 1v1 skills, right, and, and attacking out wide. And so far, uh, this, is, this is a cakewalk for the U.S., Danielle. Well, and I've been impressed, really, with the width and the, the use of the width, particularly on that right side. Emily Sonnet and Midge Purse and Rose Lavelle, the combination that created that opportunity and that goal-scoring chance for Carly Lloyd was very impressive to me. It's been more direct on the left side. I think there's opportunities, Allie, as Allie alluded to, to be um, more clinical on the left flank. Rose Lavelle with her ninth career assist. It came on that Carly Lloyd goal. She was shaken up right as we began the hydration break. And looks like Rose, being typical Rose, trying to 
trying to fight this one off. And this is a young lady who has, uh, Danielle, an amazing future ahead of her with this program. She has a completely bright future. To me, though, what worries me is just she's always had these little nagging injuries. So it's something you have to be mindful with Rose Lavelle, but she is dynamic on the field and dangerous. Shut her down. I mean, if, if, if there are much bigger fish to fry here than this game, but she's going to continue on, it looks like. Yeah, Rose will continue. We continue with the first half. Back to Allie and JP. Well, thank you, Rob. Rose does appear to be okay. Ali Vlatko Andonovsky had said before he wants his team to be more precise in the final mm -hmm. third, more sophisticated. I think you can put a check mark on those two, <laughs> at least in the first within the first half hour here. Yeah, and I specifically go back to where those services are coming from. It's not really wide. It's in that half space. It's closer to the 18. They want to get those progressions going where they do have an extra move. So then they take out one extra defender. And now when you're lining up that cross, that shot, you've only got one player to beat. And you're seeing, I think, the, the effects of that with the United States around that 18 box right now. 30th minute. U.S. leading 3-0 on goals by Carly Lloyd, Lindsey Horan, and Midge Purse. Sonnet into the middle for Lindsey Horan. And to be fair, JP, I mean, this Jamaican side isn't posing the same defensive discipline and, and problems that Portugal did pose. So you always can only play against who's out there against you, but that is the reality. Push there, not called, but the ball was out. As LaBelle went down, she's right back up. <laughs> Lexi said it. If she's laboring, make the switch. Yeah. We've got six subs. She's making the Olympic roster. She's not a bubble <laughs> player, right? You sure? We, we can all agree on that. Haran will play it. Here's Macario. Done. Macario calling for it, getting it. Here's Katarina. Sending it in towards the end line for Lloyd. And Lloyd does well just to get a corner out of that. She never gave up on that ball. It was going to go out. And a glimpse at what Macario can do. I mean, she's had very few touches, and the touches she has had have actually been in from deeper positions. You want to see her get it higher towards that 18. <laughs> The ball just went down. So that's yeah, not a that's good sign. Smart. Yeah, it's smart. Get it. They're smart by her to say. It might not be much, right? Because it was like a, a twist or a turn that, that she made. But she did come back out and try it. But she knows her own body better than anybody else. So this is good, and Sam Mewis will come in. No reason <laughs> to gamble. You with no warm up, mind you, for Sam Lewis. But the right decision. Absolutely. Well, here's a look at, at what caused the injury for Lavelle. Just a heavy touch gets away from her, and then she reaches for it. And she it looks like she slips right back there and gets tangled up on that ankle. But whatever it is, no reason to run any more on it. Her night is done. She got the job done, though. She was well. She did very well on both sides of the ball tonight. Really hustled, really worked hard. We used her 30 minutes judiciously, yes. Sam Lewis. You can tell by the ovation, becoming more and more popular. Scored the only goal the other night. Now has four this calendar year, trailing only Megan Rapino, who has seven. Press with a corner. She'll drive it near post. And I think that was handled as Haran went in for it. Copa America continues Thursday with Colombia taking on Venezuela. Coverage starts at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1. That is Brazil versus Peru at 8 p.m. Eastern on FS1. Brazil got off to a great start today, yes, Alan. they did. 3 nothing over Venezuela. Well, Neymar, Neymar. got off to a good start, yeah. Yeah. 
excited for that Argentina Chile match, though. Lionel Messi. Who? Uh, you've heard of him. <laughs> so LaBelle will get some treatment now. Walking off. The good news is she's walking off under her own power. So that's good. It's very good. Done. We'll play it back. 34th minute. U.S. with a 3 0 lead. And that's grabbed by Schneider. So the U.S. had to make that change. We may see some changes at halftime. Maybe by Jamaica. They made a couple of changes the other night. Again, we referenced that they hadn't played in some 16 months because of COVID. So their first game in the heat and humidity of Houston, it drained a lot of players. And you have players just returning from injury. Matthews being one of them. It was done. And the flight was up. Their coach, remember yesterday, Hubert Busby said, when a Jamaican tells you that it's hot and humid <laughs> in Houston, he says it's really hot and humid. They were feeling it the other night. But that was a good result against Nigeria. He said the result was actually a bonus for them because they're looking to evaluate players. He brought seven players here that had not been capped before by their country. And he gave a couple of them an opportunity the other night to get their first cap and maybe others will get that tonight. Yeah, and what was interesting too about that is that he wanted all players that are playing club football. And that's the new standard is that you have to be playing year round. And it's pretty crazy that we have to say that that hasn't been the case for a lot of these players or teams worldwide, but, but that's the way the game is evolving for the women and should have happened sooner, but grateful that it's happening now. Throw in here for Campbell. Looking to cross it. Maybe an opportunity here for Jamaica. No call given there. And the ball is cleared by the U.S. Back towards Allison Swaby. Up the middle, just missed Brown. Brown's a dangerous player, but they've not really been able to get the ball to her feet in the attacking third. No, and she'd be one that will spring them into that transition game if they can find her earlier. Out of the back, Allison Swaby, who plays for Roma in Italy. Left side, Blackwood. Knocked out by Purse. Jamaica throw in. Blackwood, and that's knocked out. Last test by Mewis. Sam Mewis now with 22 international goals. Settled by Kanye Plummer. Wearing the captain's armband. Plays for Orlando Pride. First place in the NWSL. That ball is going to go out of play. Throwing for Denisha Blackwood. Off her left foot. Deflected ball. Settled by Makaria. Here is Sonnet into the middle. Lindsay Horan over the top. Press makes a run left. Lloyd in the box, but the flag was up. But it's a really good recognition from Sonnet and Horan. Horan was just pulling away, allowing to have space around her between the lines. And Sonnet took that touch forward, and she was able to play that ball across the field. And the U.S. got out that weak side, and that's one of the things that they want to do against Jamaica is hit that diagonal area. Make 
in her 19th international appearance. Sydney Schneider will put that ball back into play. Missed the target up front. But it's still going to be a Jamaica throw in. Jamaica outshot Nigeria the other night, 12 8. Had an 8 4 edge in terms of the shots on goal, but tonight those numbers are not going to be anywhere near it against the U.S. Sonic for Dahl Kemper. Davidson. No pressure on the ball. They allow it to go upfield to Sonic. Try to find Purse. Blackwood shielded her away from the ball. It's a goal kick for Jamaica. Purse with a goal tonight. Didn't even play in the last three games. So she gets an opportunity tonight and she cashes in. Important to know, too, that besides that 18-player roster for the Olympics, four will be named as alternates. And it's not as good as, as being on that 18, but at least you still get to go because Japan is so far away, alternates would travel. Far side, the cross denied. The U.S. will be on the ball first with U.S. Moran driving it in. Just missed. Looking for Purse, who was the closest one to that ball. Moran could play pretty much anywhere in that midfield. At one time, she played as a striker earlier in her career. That's right. Over forward. Right. It could be more of a false nine, but you're spot on. Schneider upfield. Is U.S. winning that? Campbell after it. Got there first. Salon. Almost got away with that. Too many U.S. players there, though. Now it's broken up and then sent away by Sampson. U.S. immediately tries to win the ball back when they lose it. And yeah. get the throw in here. And what's just interesting is watching, you're, you're getting a good look at the back line and how they're dealing with the, the pressure of Matthews on that back line, how they're absorbing it and dropping and trying to squeeze the stepper offside, just playing with her a bit. Because the reality is, you know, that partnership between Tierna Davids and Abby Dahlkemper is one of the things that Brock Ranoski is going to be evaluating. And Matthews just playing a little game, getting in between the two of them. Horan. That's nice cutting ball. Cario for Lewis. Right at goal. They found that seam, though, in the middle that time. Yeah, and as congested as it is, but that's what Nicario can do for you. And that's really not the U.S.'s style. They want to tack down those wings, but occasionally when you get those two tens connecting, it can be a thing of beauty. Davidson for Abidal Kemper. Sonic, 1v1 at the moment. Cutting to the middle, off her left foot. Headed up the middle, settled. Miranda Macario close to it. Macario shot. Right at goal. Good instinct, though, there to have a go at it. But she's got a snappy shot, too. Just a quick release. Green tries to bring that down for herself, and then that touch pops over to Macario. Big enough window to get that shot off. Doesn't really touch her at all. Lloyd won that one in the air. Done. To the middle. Sonic. With a pullback. Dal Kepper. Horan. Piggy 
thinking about it. Let's it go, but it's blocked. And Schneider's able to get to that ball easily. Fourth minute all USA with a 3 0 lead. Great to see fans back in the stadiums. Seems like a bigger crowd than the other night. It's certainly louder, but they have more to cheer for tonight. Maybe that's it. They were more quiet the other night because the US wasn't scoring. Maybe just the weekend. Maybe. Moran. Goals in that earlier game too. Nigeria and Portugal a thrilling 3-3 game. The U.S. plays Nigeria on Wednesday in Austin, Texas. First ever game at the new Q2 Stadium, home of Austin FC of Major League Soccer. We opened up with eight straight games on the road. Coming home soon. A couple of pushes there, but first stay strong in the ball. And wins it back for Sonnet. She'll drive it. Header off the post. Lloyd saved by Schneider. And she may not know, have known much about it. The ball seemed to take her out. That was all the hard work of Mitch Purse that nearly resulted in a goal. Oh, you're spot on. Uh, holding the ball up well, drawing two defenders, now finds the open player in Emily Son. And Emily Son had seen Sam Mewis at the near post, a glancing header, then comes off the crossbar. At I think that's off her face, right? Yeah. Uh, this one. Right? Oof. Yeah. And then her head smacks the ground. Yeah, she stopped it. But as I said before, I don't think she knew much about it. That ball was traveling at such a powerful pace and from close range, too. And coaching moments here for Hubert Busby. Any chance you get. And it's good to see Schneider back up so quickly. That was a blast off the foot of Lloyd. Lloyd was looking for his second goal of this game. Four minutes added on in stoppage time. Mainly due to the hydration break. Schneider's right foot. Cleared the halfway line, but the U.S. recovers with Dunn. Dahl Kemper. Haran. Here's Dunn. Nice ball. Macario in the box. End line. Wanted to cut it back. And it's going to result in a goal kick. She is at least getting more touches here, Allie, after what, the first 15, 20 minutes, maybe hardly any. Yeah, and I also think that Haran is pulling over to that left side more, the, the pocket on the, the left side of the the single striker and Matthews, and that's where she's getting the ball and dictating play, and so that is benefiting the cardio. In the third minute of stoppage time, it's blocked. Matthews wanted to use that breakaway speed, but Dunn makes a nice recovery. Back to French. Dahl Kemper. Nearing the end of this first half from BBVA Stadium in Houston, Texas. Home of the Houston Dash, NWSL, and Houston Dynamo of Major League Soccer. Moran. Dahl Kepler. First, blocked by Blackwood, picked up. U.S. A little push there in the end. I think after the ball had already gotten by, it's a goal kick. <laughs> <laughs> Co. 
Charlie has one. U.S. has three. Moran with the second goal. And then Midge Purse with her second international goal. And her first of this calendar year. Should be less than a half a minute or so to go. Campbell. So long. Up that right wing side. Maybe one chance here in the end towards Matthews. Swept away. Is Dal Kemper retreating? On just past four minutes of stoppage time. Probably not much more left here. Chantel Swaby will take this throw in. Into the box it goes. Headed away by Macario. Headed right back in. And it's going to go out for a goal kick for French. Here's Matthews who plays for Racing Louisville. Used to play for the Washington Spirit. Eight goals in 11 appearances for Jamaica. That's going to do it. First half has come to a close. The U.S. with a 3 to nothing lead. And a night where Carly Lloyd has become the oldest player to ever score for a U.S. national team. Lindsey Horan and Mitch Purse also have goals. After the break, Rob, Danielle, and Alexi will take you through halftime. It's a 3 nothing lead for the United States versus Jamaica. And we're hearing about three subs. There's one of them, Alex Morgan. Also hearing that Lynn Williams and Christy Mewis are in the game as well. Macario is out. Dunn is out. Lloyd is out. And you would guess those are playing subs. And with Lynn Williams coming in and Dunn out, I would presume that this is when Purse goes to the back line and they flop Senator Sonnet over to that left side and Purse stays as a right back. Or stays on the right side, though. Well, he's giving opportunities to a lot of players, Allie, so... I think we'd all be wondering if Williams didn't play tonight, or Mewis, this is Mewis' hometown as well, what the story would have been, you know, what that might have meant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, even just speaking with him, when we found out about the starting lineup, I thought it was interesting that Williams wasn't in the starting lineup. Not too much so with Kristen Mewis, but he is getting minutes. Morgan, now Christy Mewis. I mean, all these players got ovations, but Mewis saw a video she did the other day with U.S. Soccer. She says that her apartment is so close to this very stadium. Now she gets to play in it in USA Colors with her sister Sam also out there now. Let's see what the second half brings. We focused in on those U.S. changes. We'll see if Jamaica's made any changes here in the second half. Yes, with it with Haran. I'm sure Black Glendonofsky wants to see more of the same here in the second half with that precision and sophistication that he saw in the first half, only this time with a few different players. Haran. Holding there. Some holding going on there. Between Sonnet and Campbell. Well, we talked about bubble players earlier in the first half, Allie, and certainly Williams and Mewis would fit into that category as well. So they're playing for a potential spot. Yeah, I mean, it'll all shake down, too, as well, how he's going to divide up the defenders, midfield forwards, and those players that can play multiple positions. I am surprised to a certain extent that he hasn't even tried Tiana Davidson as that six. We know Lindsey Rand can play there, but is yeah. Tiana Davidson an option there? Decisions will be made following these three games, and then there's two more games after that. The send-off series, both games versus Mexico, 
both in East Hartford, Connecticut, July 1 and July 5. Laid off by Morgan. Here's Haran. Across the way it comes. It's first with a goal in the first half. Carly Lloyd credited with actually the second fastest goal in U.S. women's national team history. Alex Morgan scored one 12 seconds against Costa Rica in Olympic qualifying back in 2016. 12 seconds in. That's <laughs> How is hard that to possible? imagine. Yeah. Hard to imagine. Dal Kemper. All the way to that right side. The U.S. keeping possession. Second half is just underway from Houston. The U.S. will close out the Summer Series Wednesday in Austin versus Nigeria. Here's Press sending it inside. Turn around to Christy Mewis. She tried to lead Press back in. Haran. Christy Mewis looking in. It's settled in. And then lost it on the touch. It was Sam Lewis looking to combine with her sister. Jamaica will take it up the left side. 34% possession from Jamaica. Probably what they expected. Certainly not more as this ball is cleared away. This is their final game on this summer series for Jamaica. But quite the learning experience playing the two games that they played, Nigeria and the USA, and just a few days rest. Ball played in. Flag staying down. Here's Press looking, shooting, and it's blocked. Kristen Press has been the playmaker tonight. That time she could have been the goal scorer. Knocked out of play, and Press will have another corner. She knows how close that was. And one of the few times that Jamaica was out of their defensive third, the high line allowed for that space and behind for Press, and she normally does that so well, that slalom cut to the inside and releases the shot, but she tries to redo the cut right here to go back to that near post, and that's where the block comes in. I think if she goes to the far post, she finds herself a goal. Oh, I was actually Plummer that got to that. Help with the near post. At both posts, actually, now for Jamaica. Send in low. They'll do it again. Another corner from Press. And a couple that they've targeted Lindsay Haran at that near post. U.S. up, Lindsey Horan up, among others. Only the third U.S. corner. Driven towards the middle, headed down, but wide. An opportunity for Christy Mewis. They were doing some different things on the corner kicks. We asked Blatko and then asked you about it yesterday. I think he felt, Ali, that maybe they were too predictable before. And they're trying to mix some things up. Yeah, and variety is always good. I, I do think it's interesting, though. I know they had that goal in the last match against Portugal, but they haven't been scoring as often off of set pieces as we're accustomed to seeing. It's been one of the strengths of the team. Of course, they're missing Julie Ertz, who's so good on those set pieces. French will play it for Davidson. Coming right back the other way. Nice move by Purse. Bring it up the right side. And a nice goal in the first half in the 22nd minute, playing as an attacker. Played in, but right at Schneider. Off of the right foot of Sam Mewis. And a lot of success tonight coming from that position in the tens surging through from midfield to get the winger pulling wide and we're just seeing that pattern work really well against Jamaica. Oh, Matthews will get that right off the deflection. It was right off the foot of Dahlkemper. 
Saw it, lost it there to Matthews. Couple of cuts, Matthews, and it's knocked away. It's a corner for Jamaica. I don't think Sonnet agrees. Here's the battle between the two. Sonnet just trying to be cute and play that back to Tierna Davidson, but doesn't get enough pace on it. Matthews pounces, and then the recovery ensues. Salon will take this corner. She'll drive it near post. It's blocked and then clear it out. Jamaica will recover. Ball played in, knocked away by Davidson. Sonnet Hustle saves that one from becoming a corner kick. It's a throw in for Jamaica. U.S. outstanding defensive record with just that one goal allowed in the last 15 home games. And only one first half goal allowed, period under Blacko Andonovsky. And that's after 19 games now, 20 counting this. Maybe another throw in coming up for Jamaica. Well, just remember back to when the team was telling us how detail-oriented Blacko is with their defensive positioning and the asks that he has of them. And we've never thought of this U.S. team being poor in their defensive commitment at all. And they've gone up a level. Dal Campbell with it. Slowing things down for the U.S. Davidson for Sonnet. Sam Ewis up the wing. Gave that ball right back to Jamaica. Our coverage is sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. soccer. Jamaica on the ball under some pressure. Plummer up that right side. Davidson will collect it. The U.S. with a 3 0 lead. All the goals coming in the first half, including the first one by Carly Lloyd, about 24 seconds in. Oldest player to ever score a goal for a U.S. national soccer team. Sonnet, and that's too heavy on the touch. Goal kick for Jamaica. Fifty-fifth minute, all U.S. Schneider will put this one back into play. So far, no changes for Jamaica. We're told that they want to get Kayla McCoy in there. Sampson lost it. Sam Lewis on the recovery. Dal Kemper right side with a pass. Williams leaving it. Purse. That's one of the things you talked about before in the first half, Ali, changing players' positions, right? So Purse started as an attacker. Now we see her as the right back. And Sonnet is the left back. Mm. So just comfort to be able to switch within a game. And that's what you have to do in the Olympics sometimes is, is rotate with the squad that you started with. Change things up because you don't get that many subs. You don't have the depth on the bench they would have in a World Cup with 23 players on your roster. Yeah. Davidson, short pass ahead. Haram. Too much on that. Sonnet tried to keep it in, but couldn't. So Jamaica throw in. Reports continue to be good about Julie Ertz and her recovery. Same with Tobin Heath. Heath is training with the team, but was not on the roster. Latest we heard, both are expected to be able to play in the Olympics. Williams. Into the middle, cutting off a run. And Schneider came out quickly before Alex Morgan could get a touch. 
How good is that pass, though? Just the penetrating pass to take out the lines, and Alex Morgan on the half turn lets that roll across her body. It's really good awareness from her. That gap is there, the channel is there, and she knows she's got the player beat behind her. And if she got a little bit on that to slow down the pace of the ball, she would have been in. Schneider did well off her line, but just a really good awareness by yeah. Morgan. The player she beat was her Orlando Pride teammate, Plummer. Coming up the field, Brown. Nice move there. Going wide, right side. Cameron. Tried to send that ball in, but didn't get the opportunity. It was blocked, and then the foul. Well, it's a small thing, JP, but just on that last play by Jamaica as they started to attack, watching Lindsey Horan fill in the gaps in the back line, that's something that Julie Ertz does incredibly well. Horan trying to pick up where Ertz is left off. Lynn Williams thought she had a foul drawn. Obviously, Swavy had it. Knocked out by the U.S. It'll be a Jamaica throw-in. Blackwood. And possession lost there. Just on a simple throw-in. The U.S. will take it from the far side. Lynn Williams over there. 35 caps, 10 goals in her international career. Got more playing time under Vlatko Andonovsky. Not as much lately. Ball pushed back right side. Purse. Dal Kemper. Horan. Sonic. Everyone getting involved for the U.S. Offensively knocked out by Jamaica off Campbell. The Sonic throw in. Davidson. Del Kemper was higher up. Deflected ball. Jody Brown was going to go for it. But knows it's Jamaica's ball. Kayla McCoy is going to be coming into the game replacing Shana Matthews. First sub made by Jamaica. McCoy plays for Rangers in Scotland. Matthews Knight. It's done. And not a surprise as Matthews is working her way back into full fitness. And a glimpse of really what Matthews and what this Jamaica team wants to accomplish with the ability to press, to be able to do over 90 minutes. Obviously, haven't been able to see that tonight, but there's glimpses of it. And to be more vertical. Kayla McCoy just came in, used to play for the Houston Dash, also went to Duke University. Eligible for Jamaica because her grandparents are Jamaican. Sonic. Pushing it to the outside. We've seen Sam Mewis drift wide quite a bit here. And it's just one of the rotations they utilize with those tens and the wingers. One of them will pinch in, one pulls wide. Or you get the overlapping fullback. Now the run by Mewis. Try to find press. And the foul is given. But outside the box, and a yellow card's coming. First booking. Goes to Campbell. And it's a good rotation on this left side for the United States. When Mewis does come wide, that means press is in the interior pocket. And this touch right there, if that comes off to press, that means press can have a shot immediately, or she can go at that center back and cut into the right and get another shot off. So good options there when press is in the interior pocket. So this is press now with 41 career assists. Free kick, right at goal, punched up the middle by Schneider. It's still loose and then cleared away by Jamaica. It's a U.S. throw in. Past the hour mark, we're now in the 62nd minute. 3 0 U.S., all three goals coming in the first half. Lloyd, Horan, and Purse 
with a goal scores press assisting on that last goal from Mitch Purse. The last goal was in the 22nd minute. Horan. Christy Mewis. Horan. Try to send one in. A miss hit there. Mewis gets it back, saw it. Going back post. It was Williams, closest one to it in the air. Attempted clearance is blocked. And on that right side, it's kept alive for the moment. Now it's out. It's still a U.S. throw-in. Good hustle from Sam Mewis. Jamaica wants to make another change. We'll see when that happens. They've, got, they've had Tierney. Tierney Wilshire up. Off that U.S. throw-in. Off Williams. U.S. Pass! It was there for her. And she was the only one in the 18 that read the service that was coming in from U.S. You could just see her drift into that back post pocket. Should put that one away. So Shana Campbell is out. Jenny Wiltshire is in. Formerly from Rutgers University. Hometown Elmer, New Jersey. So seventh international. And here's appearance. a good look at it. Look at Press. She just drifts into that pocket. No one else is aware of it. Unmarked, and she can't believe it. That's one I think she goes with her head. She nods it down. Instead, when you lead with the foot, more room for air. Grand chasing that, and there's a collision. Two players down, one from each side. Val Kemper plays it back to France, who's not really been tested at all tonight by Jamaica. And now they'll stop play for the two players. And Lindsey Horan is still down. And 50-50 ball, the two players just collide into one another. Trying to shake that one off. The U.S. have made four changes tonight. They're planning another. And there it is. Sophia Smith for Kristen Press. We had another dynamic night. She really did. She looks comfortable on both the right side and the left side. Cutting in, usually likes to come into the interior pocket. Sophia Smith, on the other, who, on the other hand, who just inserted in, is more of a vertical player, but she does like to go 1v1 as well. Started to find her way in the NWSL with the Portland Thorns this season. This is the sixth international appearance for young Sophia Smith. She's only 20 years of age. Salon on it. Up the middle, back for Salon. She'll drive this one right side. Not close enough to a teammate. Sixty-sixth minute. U.S. with a three-nothing lead. All the goals coming in the first half. They're struck in the first minute, the seventh minute, and the twenty-second minute. Christine U.S. off her left foot. Smith played it into the middle. Salam will get to it and lost it there. On it. Into the box. U.S. will get that rebound. And keep it moving. Christy Mewis. Emily Sonnet still high up from her left back spot. Horan. Wanted to give and go there, but it was intended for Smith. And Portland Thorns teammate didn't work. Smith recovered it for Horan. And Smith's pass was behind. 
Christy Mewis. Let's just pass the clock. <laughs> a little, a little bit of a hold and, a and little, then some. How about the move by Salon? 67th minute free kick for Jamaica. And we're going to see young Peyton McNamara coming into the game. Replacing Chantel Swaby. Peyton McNamara from Ohio State University. Co-freshman of the year. We talked to her head coach yesterday, Lori Walker Huck. She raved about McNamara. Her commitment, her vision, attention to detail. Her leadership, Allie, as a freshman. And that says a lot. When you can come in as a freshman into a program and no get noticed immediately for leadership, it means you're cut from a different cloth, usually. She played in several positions in the midfield at the 6, 8, and 10. One game played as the number 9 because of an injury to another player up top. She was one of the players that Cubit Busby said to keep an eye out for when we asked him about young Jamaican talent. That was the name that he spoke of. Jamaica on the ball. It's going to be ruled a goal kick. The U.S. touched it last, and Schneider will put it back into play. Allie, for those joining in now, 69th minute, U.S. with a 3 nothing lead. How would you sum it up? Well, if they're joining in now, where were they 69 minutes ago? I would start with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I, true. <laughs> I, I really think with the U.S. team, it's been full domination, something that we anticipated. This Jamaican side hasn't been together much. They're not as comfortable with each other. They're not as familiar with each other. But for the U.S., this is really about testing out individuals and landing on who's going to make that Olympic roster. Strong performances from that first group that we saw in the first half. And I think they did everything that Vlaco to this point has asked of them. And that's be more selective in the final third with that service. Try to get in closer to the 18 when they are releasing those services. And they're doing that. And they've been incredibly dynamic and effective when they've picked and chosen those moments to go. And I don't think they've been really tested on the other side of things. When you look at the countermeasures the U.S. has had to employ, there have been moments where you've seen Jamaica come out and utilize their pace, but the U.S. has had two, three defenders on them immediately. Haran from Dahlkepper. Lindsay with one of the goals tonight. Davidson, Dahlkepper. On that right side, it's laid off. Maybe something here for the U.S. And the ball played across. Headed up the middle. That was Haran. Slight deflection there. Wilshire. Last touched out. Apparently by Jamaica. Dal Kemper. Moran, sending it in. Oh, Morgan was there. Looked like she wanted to combine, maybe. Yeah, but you've seen with these insertions of different players that the rhythm has dropped a bit. And even there, Alex Morgan made the run. Lindsay Horan hadn't had her head up to play it. Then Alex Morgan paused. Then Horan recognized, and then she went. And that just throws off the timing and, and, and disrupts the play. That's one of the challenges for some of these players that are trying to stake a claim on a spot. When that rhythm goes, you suffer individually. Salon looks for Cameron. Played back by Smith. Here's Haran. Well, picked off, Tennis for Smith. Wilshire. Cameron try to return it. His last touch by the U.S. You mentioned Adriana French has not been tested in goal. Her last game with this team, March 11th, 2020, three to one win versus Japan in Frisco. And then COVID shut everything down. So she had played that last game in 2020, then didn't play in the NWSL because she injured her knee 
So didn't play at all in 2020. Now she gets another opportunity tonight. She's done well with Portland again this year. Pretty second minute. We're expecting this to be another hydration break. We'll wait to confirm that before we go. And it is. So Rob, take advantage of this hydration break. Will do, JP. Danielle, we were talking just minutes ago. All three goals came in the first half. Feels like the second half. Yeah, it feels as if the foot has been taken off the gas a little bit in my mind. And as Ali mentioned, the tempo and the rhythm has slowed a little bit. But it happens when you're up 3-0 to zero after 45 minutes. I thought they had a lot of success on the flanks in the first half. I thought they were playing a little bit more centrally. And there was a little bit more of that cat and mouse. I thought the Mewis sisters played well. I thought Haran had some opportunities. Kristen Press inside that interior pocket as well. So a little bit of a different look here in the second half. But still good. From the U.S. Yeah, and a change of uh, personnel and moving players around. And, and by the way, uh, you know, whether you're Purse or, or Sonnet or others, your versatility, that is a huge, huge value when it's coming down to picking those numbers. But time is ticking. Time is ticking. So someone like Lynn, Lynn Williams, who's been given a lot of opportunities, uh, still not quite making that mark. And once again, music's going to stop. Look at Rose Lavelle there being a team player, subbed out with that injured ankle, offering up. Anybody, anybody want this towel to cool things off? Um, Daniel, what are you looking for? What's Vlatko looking for as this match comes to a conclusion? I think he's looking to see this game out. I think he's looking to continue to, to build. It's the games within the games. It's the things he, he's going to continue to talk about in terms of preparation ahead of the Olympics. So those are the things that he's looking for in my mind. And no injuries. No, of course, yep. yeah. Yep. And another sub coming on. JP, we'll let you and Allie handle it. We'll see you guys post game. Thank you, Rob. It's Andy Sullivan making her return. And Lindsey Horan will go out. So Andy Sullivan gets a chance. Injuries have hurt her an ACL in 2016. Another one of those Stanford players. Captain of the Washington Spirit. Terrific player. Just plays at a position, Allie, where the team has so much depth. That's true. That's true. But, or they've actually just had consistency <laughs> with yeah. Julie Ertz and have had no need to put anyone else there. I mean, that's been the argument, but she's been indestructible. So they haven't trained a second six, and that's what we're getting glimpses of now with Lindsay Horan. I don't think it was Lindsay Horan's cleanest night in possession, which was a bit of a surprise. Sometimes when you have too much time, you actually make more errors than when you're mm. under pressure. And we'll see what Sullivan can bring to the table. I know Richie Burke has been incredibly high on her leadership with the Washington spirit in the locker room. Yes, she was a young captain, right? I mean, she's 25 now, but she was captain before that. To be a captain of a team in your early 20s. Sonnet's pass is blocked. McCoy, take it away, Christy Mewis for Andy Sullivan. Davidson. It's the sixth sub, sub, by the way, Sullivan, for the U.S. On this right side, there's a Sam U.S. attempt, knocked out. Corner kick, U.S. So we've seen U.S., Sam, that is, drift left, now drifting right. And now into the middle for this corner. She scored off a corner kick the other night. He's the only goal of the game. Could this be Mewis to Mewis? Oh. Off the left foot of Christy Mewis near post. It was turned to Davidson making the run. Christy will get it right back. Setting it across. Missed one target, but there were four Jamaican players there to defend on Lynn Williams. Make another change. Shania Hales will come in. Stephanie Cameron will come out. Hales plays for Aston Villa. It's her first call up, her second game. She played the other night as a starter. Jamaica's finding some new players in the form of former English youth internationals, and Hales is one of them. Yeah, and she's a player that more than likely will slot in as kind of that wing back winger, but she might be better actually as a nine. Oh, 
that. Was cleared long by Jamaica. Here's Jody Brown. Being chased. Put that ball into space. Hales was after it. Coming right back to French. Off her right foot. Not it down. U.S. will keep possession. Sonnet. Besides the individuals, Ali, that Blatko and Danofsky will look at, what does he want to see from his team in closing out the next 15 or so minutes? I, I think with the subs that they've had, can they up the tempo? You know, perhaps the, the chemistry is a little bit off, but up the tempo just in terms of how you're moving the ball. Just wide right. Williams sending it in. Missing one. Here's Sophia Smith thinking about it. The shot was blocked. And Schneider with an easy grab. Future is bright, too, for Sophia Smith. Another number one pick in WSL draft in 2020. Make it back on him with Hales. And overrun on that side by Mewis. Sam Mewis. Branch. Short for Dahlkemper. Sullivan. Nice ball white. Here's another one. In for Williams. The cutback. On the chase with Smith. Look out there a little bit too late. Jody Brown after it. Moves it up the wing. That ball went out. And this was such a good ball in behind by Sullivan into Sam Mewis. Sam Mewis then just takes one touch to lay it in for Williams, who's running in behind. Like, that's the tempo that you're talking about. Two balls, take out two lines, and you're in. Opportunity there, but it's knocked away. And Purse, Christy Mewis, right-footed shot. No rebound. Not as much on that one as Christie would have liked. 50 year for her with a Houston dash. Played actually under Blatko and Danofsky when Blatko coached the old FC Kansas City team in the earlier days of the NWSL. French will go short. 80th minute. The U.S. will play again on Wednesday against Nigeria. Q2 Stadium in Austin, Texas. First ever event there. Sporting event. So the U.S. women's national team gets to play there even before Austin FC gets to play there in their own stadium. That'll be the answer to a trivia question years from now. <laughs> and you'll know it. Right? Or I might forget by then. <laughs> <laughs> Dal Kemper will move it. <laughs> U.S. with possession. 81st minute. Just trying to close it out. In style if they can. Williams. It's been a much better night than it was on Thursday. On just two days rest. Sophia Smith. And that ball got away. Goals coming in the first half tonight. Lloyd, Horan, and Purse. Well, that one was ruled a corner, and Christy Mewis will take it now that Kristen Press is out. Press to take it all the corners tonight. Free kicks. The left foot of Christy Mewis towards the middle. Headed down. It's loose in the box. That's blocked. Morgan looked like she had a crack at it. The chase is on, and Dal Camper will get there first. Legs are always stronger for the team that's up 3 0. Just seems that way, right? <laughs> Sullivan into the box. It's another decent service. 
Jordy Brown was after it, but it's won instead by Purse. Sullivan. Sana. Sophia Smith, nice cut there. Shooting low. Schneider is able to keep that ball. A really good run by Christy Mews just to clear this space. Sophia Smith recognizes it and drives into the 18. That one almost glides into the far post. Jamaica back on it with Hales. Peyton McNamara up the middle. Brown wanted to give and go, but Salon could not deliver. Smith back to the U.S. 83rd minute. Slow down by Wilshire. Christy Mewis. Looking to turn. Sonnet. Christy Mewis into the middle. Headed once. Lynn Williams going for it. Purse. Sam Mewis. And that's taken away. The ball is going to be cleared out. Well, the impact of the pandemic on youth sports has been significant. And while recovery has started in some communities, too many children in need are still on the sidelines. Visit GoodSports.org to learn how you can help Fox Sports and Good Sports restore play for at-risk youth and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Jamaica back on the ball with Salam. Now ball played up to the speedy Jody Brown. Taking the shot, and in the end, she had nothing left. She played a lot of minutes over these last couple of games. And I think that time, the legs were not in the same page as the mind was. Yeah, it was a breakdown from the U.S. But even though she doesn't finish that, you know that's going to be one of the plays that Block Lewandowski is going to clip and have his team take a look at. Ellie, when the subs were made, it's significant, you know, who came in, right? But also, who didn't come out, right? Purse is getting a full 90 here. Davidson a full 90. Sonner a full 90. And those are players that Daniel Slayton referenced at the top of the show. Yeah, and it's really hard to read into, into what's into Vlaco's little black notebook that he has. That ball was close to Christy Mewis. Now Sidney Schneider will get it. That pass has been on more than the U.S. has played it. Alex Morgan has made some really good runs. And that early recognition was spot on in that moment. But back to your point, I mean, I think Purse has actually had a, a really strong night, both as that winger and then you saw just some calmness with her in that fullback position and she was understanding the rotations well early on. I don't think the ball has found its way over to that far side enough offensively in the second half. There is so much talent on this team, and even from players that were not part of this 23 that you know very good players are going to be left off the team. And there'll be some probably controversial ones. There'll be some that you'll say you could debate it. But make no mistake, a lot of talented players won't be able to make the grade just because of the lower roster number for the Olympics. Jody Brown's night is done. She gave it everything she had. Sade Adamalikan will come in from the University of Southern California. Her 11th appearance for Jamaica. Not much time left in this. We're now entering 87th minute. U.S. with a three to nothing lead. The big score at halftime, took something out of this game, and then all of the subs as well. Jamaica's also made five changes. U.S. has made six. Sonnet. Driven long by Del Kemper. And in the end, that's too long. Schneider will have a goal kick. 
Yeah, and they've tried that ball a few times tonight. I just don't think that's the right decision. How effective the United States has been in the wide play. It's incredibly condensed, and then look, Jamaica's gonna just absorb that ball in behind. I wanna see, Ali, the lineup Vlad Grindanovsky puts out on Wednesday, right? Because the first game, with the exception of Julie Ertz, who's, who's been injured, that could have been the starting 11 for the Olympics. The second game, there were six changes, and then what will we see for the third game against Nigeria? I guess time will tell in a couple of days. Ball played in towards Morgan, and the flag was up. Even before she was ready to take that shot, she was the last to know about that flag. I think he goes back to his starting core for that third mm. game, trying to replicate just the rhythm of the Olympics. You start off with a big team in Sweden, then you have New Zealand, and you go to Australia, and you would presume that there would be rotation that would happen in that second group game, mm. similar to the, to the rhythm of this tournament or this series. Yeah, and we'll see about Rose Lavelle. Remember, she left in the 30th minute. She was on the bench. She was helping her teammates, so you would think it was nothing that was serious. But would they sit her out Wednesday as a precaution? Who knows? We'll find out. Running hard, running strong here in the 89th minute. It's a late whistle, but I think she drew it. Good performance all around from Purse tonight, playing two different positions. Scoring as an attacker in the first half. Right back here in the second half. Free kick for Christy Mewis. Two in the wall for Jamaica. Blackwood and Hales. This went low, it's headed wide. Ball deflected on that side. Good battle there. It's going to belong to the U.S. Good hustle from Tierna Davidson. And now Sana will take the throw. Waiting on a signal, an official signal on stoppage time. There for Smith, heavy touch, fights to win it back and fouls in the process. And now it's confirmed. Three minutes of stoppage time. U.S. leading three to nothing. Lloyd, Horan, and Purse are the goal scorers. All of the goals coming in the first half. Schneider. Try to go long. U.S. won that one in the air. Andy Sullivan will play it all the way back to A.D. French. Sullivan. Davidson. The U.S. pushing it ahead. Williams pass. Sam U.S. Runners in the box, slow down. U.S. recovers, played it across. Header off the fingers and in of Schneider. Alex Morgan. 4 0 U.S. Just really incisive play from the United States through the lines. One pass takes out the first line. The second one takes out the defensive line. And then Sam Lewis. I thought she played the wrong pass initially when I saw that. I'm like, why are you not playing Sophia Smith? Well, she chose wisely. She picks out the little aerial ball right to that near post for Alex Morgan. And it's really an easy, not at home finish for her. Wide open, no pressure, no one disrupting the path whatsoever. And just heads it back the way it came. Enough power to glance it by Schneider. Well, it's Morgan, her 110th international goal. So much.
about a minute left. Allie, how would you sum up this night? The U.S. did what they had to do tonight. One of the things that was focused on upon coming into this match was how they were going to break down a compact defense that they likely were going to face against Jamaica. They did it well in that first half, got off to such a strong start. And in particular, they did it in the right way, which was getting towards the central area, central areas before playing that final ball across. And the U.S. benefited from that. Second half rhythm broke down a bit, but I think ultimately he got some answers. Or Vlaco probably reaffirmed positions he already held in this match. I think first had a really strong game. I think Sonnet had a good game as well. The only question I have about Sonnet is, does that bobble, the giveaway at the, at the, in the defensive third, does that hurt her case at all in Vlaco's eyes? Or is that one of those things that you're willing to accept, knowing that she is a versatile outside back? I don't think Macario, I don't think we saw her impact as much as we would have anticipated. That's a great sign, Gabriel Christian Erickson. All of our thoughts and prayers are with him after uh, what could have been a, a greater tragedy than it was yesterday. First responders there were fantastic. Well, that'll do it for us here tonight. Lloyd, Horan, Purse, and Morgan are the goal scorers. Carly Lloyd becomes the oldest player in a USA jersey to ever score a goal. And Rob Stone, we started the night with a big goal from Lloyd. We ended it with an exclamation point from Alex Morgan. And it's now 55 straight games, JP, that the U.S. is unbeaten at home. They improved the 4-0 all-time versus Jamaica. They've outscored them 26-0. This calendar year, they're 8-0-1, 27 goals scored, one goal allowed. The big takeaway, Danielle, for Vlatko Andonovsky and his staff tonight, what do you think it was? For me, it was another strong, solid performance, a step in the right direction, looking ahead towards the Olympics and some big goals from Carly Lloyd and also to Alex Morgan to cap it off. Yeah, your uh, goal scorers scored, uh, bookending the game, and that's always important. Uh, the Rose Lavelle's injury situation, you hope that it's minimal, uh, because that's not something that you want uh, going forward. But they got the goals that they needed, got the shutout again, solid. So the U.S. unbeaten in their last 41 games now. They haven't conceded a goal in any of their last seven home matches. Plenty more to come on tonight's convincing victory, including Carly Lloyd's take on this win and her early goal.